Hey guys, welcome back to the train room. Um, I just wanted to do a quick talk on these on these uh, the older LGB digital system. Um, it's been kind of interesting, really. I, I didn't expect everything to work because <laughs> I bought it all secondhand, and, and although it looks in really great condition, uh, you just never know with old electronics, you know. So um, I've tried two versions, and I'll explain those in a minute. Um, we'll forget this one for a minute. So this is the control that came with it. And you can see I've retrofitted it with the wireless transmitter. And basically it's one of these modules. So this is the wired module. You can see that. And then you can remove that and put the digital module in. And you also need this receiver. Uh, that's 55055. This one's P for parallel. And I'll explain that in a minute. Um, I think in, in North America, it's 55056. I think the FCC regulations are probably different. So um, a couple of things. So if you get this power supply, this is six amp. Okay, to put it into context. This single analog controller is rated at one amp and that's fine for just, you know, one locomotive running around. And of course, digital, you can have multiple locomotives. Uh, when I say digital, also known as DCC. Um, so this, I guess, central station or MTS, multi-train system, this is a slightly newer one, so it's 55006P, P for parallel. Now, essentially what parallel means is that it sends the, the, the digital signal in parallel. So it, 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 it sends a burst of data down the tracks to the individual locomotives or digital accessories uh, very, very quickly. Whereas the older ones, like this one, you can see that one just says uh, on that set, on the sender unit, there's no P on that one. Whereas if I go to this one, that sender unit has a P and P is for parallel. Um, when I was looking around on the internet to get some information, there's, uh, there's all sorts of old wives tales about this stuff. Basically everything is compatible with everything else. Okay, it's just that, for example, with the serial version, if you send like a CV command to something, say, I don't know, you're going to send CV23 with the non-parallel version, i.e. the serial version, it'll send the number one 23 times. And so there's a potentially a significant time delay. Whereas with a parallel version, it just sends the signal, no problem at all. All right. But I want to demonstrate that a non-parallel controller will work with a parallel receiver and a parallel command station. All right, so I'll just choose locomotive. I'll we'll go to um, choose locomotive zero two, or zero four, I think is that one. Let's see what happens if we move forward. So I'm doing this one-handed. There you go. Turn the light on. Okay. So as you can see, it works absolutely fine. And instead of having a wheel control for speed and direction, you have two buttons. And this is also a sort of a, a stop button, but just for the locomotive you're controlling. You still have the emergency stop button if you need to stop all your locomotives. All right, um, that's it. So this controller here, I think I mentioned before, these two, forget this one for a minute. So these two, are basically identical. All right, I know the sticker's slightly different on the front. You can buy these with the 55015 and a letter P for parallel. These don't have it. But as I explained before, this one is now parallel because it was modified by Massoth in Germany. Don't know when, but it was some years ago. And I've had both of these controllers apart very carefully and I, I really can't tell anything much different between the electronics. So I'm guessing it's software, who knows? So. <laughs> But as you can see here, I'm using a non-parallel sender and a non-parallel controller with a parallel system, with a parallel receiver and a parallel um, central command station, for want of a better word. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'll say the only difference is it, it, it can be slower to send commands. So if you've got a complex model railway with a lot, you know, lots of features, your locomotive has a lot of features, then you will notice a difference. Um, but you know the cost of this G scale stuff. If you if you're running a 
a big layout with you know very complex locomotives especially in, the, in north america you'll have you know multiple units you know so you've got like four f7s you know and you're sending commands to all those you could have some real delays on sending the data to get the system to respond or to get the locomotive to respond so it's worth bearing that in mind um but like i say if <laughs> you know if you if you're going to have a big G-scale layout with lots of uh, North American mu locomotives or even European mu locomotives with lots of functions, then you're, you're probably not going to want this. You're probably going to want a more modern system like a Zemo or something like that. So, But not knocking these, these are great. I mean, everything seems to be backwards compatible. I'm very, very impressed with it. So um, it's I think it's a shame. If you look at the history of LGB, it's I think they relate to the DCC game. And uh, they cause themselves some issues, probably unnecessarily. But I can't fault the controls. It just works, you know. But it's not uh, hugely big on functionality. Although having said that, these digital controllers, the push-button ones, you can see they have a lot of possibilities. And I'm sure you can program in CVs because if you have the programming cable, which is I'll just show you here. So you notice this is a programming cable. And that's what, and I'm not going to explain how this just connects because it's got four wires. So you got to connect two wires to the track and two wires, I believe, to different points into the command station. I'm not too sure. Um, but if you buy the kit, and you'll see these online. I mean, these are, you know, the, I don't think they're being produced new anymore. They're quite old. So, but that's the that's the item you want to look for. And a good one will have the controller. You know, possibly the programming cable uh, and the receiver. I had to buy all this separate. Okay, I mean, in my <clears throat> my digital kit, these were included, and this controller was included, but connected via that cable. Um, but I wanted to mess around with the wireless stuff because, like I say, I'm a, I know I'm a bit weird because I like messing around with all the electronics. So, okay, guys, that's it. I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.